Hey, I'm Dalton Rothrock, and we're going to be talking about the different themes in the Old Testament. Some of the large blaring themes include sin and law. <clears throat> I would even argue that sin is the largest theme in the Old Testament. Much like the world today, the Old Testament is plagued with sin and the direct disobedience of God. The theme of law directly correlates with sin because, well, sin is the disobedience of God's rules. <clears throat> I think that the law theme weaving through the Bible is something that scares new Christians and even deters some long-time Christians from reading the Old Testament. God is not scary, however. <clears throat> Someone must lay down some guidelines for the humans to live by. Oftentimes people say that the Bible is like a guiding book for Christians. And that's because God plays the law throughout the Old Testament examples like the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> Some of the worst examples that take place in the Old Testament is the worship of false gods or idols and breaking the mutual covenants set between God and his people. You shall have no other gods before me. It's a quote from the Bible and it's a simple command that God asks of his people. Yet people like King Solomon <laughs> <coughs> King Nebuchadnezzar, um, the Egyptians, and Judas failed to follow. While no form of sin is okay, the worshipping of false gods is something that anchors God several times throughout the Old Testament, as, it did, as did broken covenants. The most obvious broken covenant was between God and those he saved from the tyrannous rule of Egypt. Most people don't know the story of God, or most people know the story of God parting the Red Sea for Moses and the Israelites to escape from their captors. But what most people don't know is the saga of failures that followed. <coughs> as avid Bible, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, as avid Bible readers, no, they did not. As a matter of fact, they disobeyed disobeyed God several times. God blesses his followers <clears throat> with the miracles and blessings, yet people fail him time and time again. Put yourself in his shoes. You might have children, or you have children that you offer a great life to. They're happy in those lives. They decide to go and worship their friend at school's parents instead of you and are constantly breaking promises. Eventually, you would get fed up and say, hey, if you want to keep living this glorious life, <clears throat> things around here are going to change. If the children did not listen to the new rules, there would be punishment in order. Well, this is very similar to how we learn about God's law. Everyone's heard of the Ten Commandments. There were rules set in place by God to keep the Israelites in order following their salvation. God rules with a strong fist, and in the Old Testament, this becomes very clear. <coughs> um, God sends down heavy punishments to those who disobey him. He sends down diseases, droughts, and the stripping of his blessings. Which, to an outsider doesn't understand or appreciate what God has done for them, so might seem harsh. God does not ask for much. And so those who disobey him get punished. Without law, there would be no sin. However, the tales of sin are vital to our history as Christians. I think the stories of sin and law <coughs> are what set up the life and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Had the kings and Israelites, Israelites not forced God's hand, um, we would never have had the need for Jesus. So law and sin are the foundations of Christianity. Throughout the course so far, my eyes have been opened up <clears throat> to the importance of the Old Testament. I was taught my entire life that there was no real value in those stories. They were fictional stories. <laughs> Sorry. They're fictional stories um, to promote the wow factor of God's miracles. However, through the readings, lectures, and the approach that was taught 
on how to read those stories in the Old Testament, I've realized the value in said stories. As Tremper Longman III said, the purpose of reading these stories is to enrich our spiritual life <coughs> and knowledge for God. <coughs> the understanding of sin and law in those themes are a large part of why my knowledge of the Old Testament has grown. As Christians, we are taught the, light, the laws of God and what sinning looks like. It was not until this course that I took the time to read the books of the Old Testament. I had not read the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or King Solomon. Therefore, I did not know the value of those stories. The majority of the Old Testament stories revolve around God's children sinning and the tribulation trying to pull them back to him. <clears throat> Understanding this is what led me to understand the frustration God was feeling and the reason he sent down Jesus to save our souls. I always knew the story of Jesus, but I never just truly understood why God took such vast measures. God did not lay down hard rules to follow. Sin is inevitable, but he asks that we try to do our best to follow his rules. <coughs> Um, he is forgiving God and shows that through his patience and the sacrifice of his son, following his law is the last is the least that Christians can do to atone for the mistakes that we as humanity have made. I somewhat resent the fact that I was not taught to value the Old Testament because I lacked understanding of why God sent down his only son. <clears throat> Reading the Old Testament is vital so you can get the full picture, know the whole tale. It is important to... Oh, sorry. I credit this gain appreciation to this course. I would have never taken the time to read the Old Testament stories if it weren't for this course. My personal goal is to take a small win out of every course that I take here at CCU. However, understanding the purpose of the Old Testament is a huge win in my books. <clears throat>